All right, all right, uh, Shalom Aikim. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone, which rule well. And I want to give uh, peace, greetings, and salutations to all the elect Aikim that's pushing this word in uh, truth and sincerity, you know, throughout the four corners of the earth, you know, and the brothers that's not wavering in the faith, you know, being diligent in this truth. You know, I say shalom to you, brothers, you know, and I say shalom, you know, to the few sisters that believe in all meekness and humbleness, you know, I say shalom. You know, uh, I'm your brother Zakaria from GMS Miami Camp, and Lord willing, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakadash, you know, uh, Adawan Ratiza, you know, that means Lord willing. You know, so Lord within this lesson is edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, and my lesson today, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah Bahashem Kakadash is on how the Lord He's gonna take care of his servants. I right, during the time of famine, during the time of Jacob's trouble. All right, when all hell breaking loose, all right, the scripture said in the last days, perilous time shall come. All right, and this time that's coming is gonna be like a time never before. The Lord's gonna make sure his servants eat and drink and are protected, man. You know, I had a quick, uh, just a quick testimony. You know, we see it all the time, you know, but there was this, I was driving in my car, you know, and I was uh, getting off from the exit off 95, you know, and, I, and there was a long red light. You know, it was a lot of cars, so so I stayed there multiple lights. And there was this homeless dude. Yeah, he, he probably was an Edomite. You know, I don't know. He looked like an Edomite. But he was out there, you know, with his sign in his hand, you know, asking for money, asking for help and stuff, you know. So one dude, you know, uh, one dude had a bottle of water out of the car, you know. And I was I was thinking, I was thinking, damn, the Lord gave this dude a bottle of water. You know, how much more, how much more his servants, you know. All right. And it's truth, you know. All right. How much more the Lord is going to make sure his servants eat a drink. This dude, he's just out there, you know. He, whether he's acting homeless or not, you know, through the spirit of the Lord, the Lord has someone to give him a bottle of water. All right. And then he left. Then then I was thinking in my mind, I said, damn, I'm going to do a video on that. You know, then he left. And then the dude, the same dude uh, had a, he pulled out a Gatorade. <laughs> so the dude ran back and got a Gatorade, you know, as I was thinking of, about, I'm going to make a video on this, you know, Lord willing, when I get home, you know, just showing how the Lord, you know, just feed these regular demons out here, man. Like how 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 Lord have people take care of them. How much more the Heavenly Father Yahweh, you know, through his son Yahweh shall gonna take care of his servants, man. That's pushing this word that truly believe in him when all hell is breaking loose. You know, because you think in those times people are just gonna be handing out water like that to people. No. It's gonna be a famine. All right, it's gonna be a lack of bread, lack of food. These people they're gonna try to they're gonna actually kill each other over uh, a bottle of water or Gatorade. All right. All right, because the Lord says it's going to be in the, uh, in the last days, but the, one of the signs of the Lord's coming is what's going to be a famine. All right, a global famine. All right, but the Lord said his servants are going to eat and drink. So this is book Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 13. You know, Salaki like says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, power Yahweh, by Shemel Shah, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice. But ye shall be a saint, a shame. So the Lord's servants gonna be rejoicing. They're gonna be fed. They're gonna be they're gonna have water to drink. Alright, the Lord's gonna provide for that for the elect men, all right, in their houses, you know, and their children. You know, they they'll the the hus the wives, the husband, the men of the Lord first, you know. And their wives, all right, their children, all right. Yahweh Bashimasha gonna come through, as he always do, man. Verse 14, Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit, man. So the Lord is going to have his servants right, in a certain spirit of rejoicing during the time of famine. All right. Scripture said said in Job 5. All right. Job chapter 5 and verse 19, He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. All right. Ultimately, when those missiles being shot down, a Yahweh Bashima Shah is going to deliver us in a so called UFO, all right, a chariot, all right, what the world ignorant calls a UFO, man. That's how the Lord's coming back in the chariot, all right? And He's going to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel, all right? This is the book of um, Job 5, and verse 20. In famine, He shall redeem thee from death, 
and in war from the power of the sword. All right. So the Lord said he's going to redeem us from death. All right. And it made me think of um, Habakkuk. Uh, well, Daniel. Daniel and Habakkuk. How the Lord. All right. Th this book of Bell and the Dragon. All right. How Daniel was in the lion's den because he wasn't worshiping idols. Uh, he didn't worship uh, Bell. All right. The idol over there in Babylon. All right. All right. And, the, and Daniel, you know, made a kind of like a bomb, you know, and destroyed the idol. And the people of the um, of Babylon, you know, they came to the king and they said, uh, they said, what what you trying to make yourself with you? You know, roughly paraphrasing. So they asked for Daniel. All right, they, the people was pressing the king. So the king gave Daniel over to him and they put him in the lion's den. All right. Because he didn't bow down all right, to the image. <laughs> All right, to their idols just how in these times all right we're not supposed to bow down all right to the image of the beast the revised roman empire or take the karagma all right all right which we know what the karagma is all right that's going to be made mandatory so we got to have that same spirit and daniel he didn't i right, fold up all right this is a good book three he didn't fold up and the lord made sure he eat made sure he was fed all right while he was in the, in, in the lion's den man this book of Bell and the Dragon, verse 28. When they of Babylon heard that, they took great indignation and conspired against the king, saying, The king has become a Jew and hath destroyed Bell. He hath slain the dragon. Because, yeah, you read more. All right. Uh, the king thought all right, the, the idol was real. He thought he was feeding the, the, every time they put out food, the priest put out food, you know, the, the idol would eat it. All right. The idol would eat the food. And Daniel was like, Daniel was laughing at him, man. All right. Because Daniel was very wise. All right. And he proved, Daniel proved that his idol wasn't nothing. All right. All right. It says, and the king became a, uh, so the king is become a Jew. It has destroyed Bill. And he have slain the dragon and put the priest to death. So they came to the king and said, deliver us, Daniel, or else we will destroy thee in thine house. Verse 30. And when the king saw that they pressed sore, press him sore, being constrained, he delivered Daniel unto them. Verse 31. Who cast him into the lion's den where he was six days. So he was in the lion's den six days. And the Lord shut the mouth of the lions, man. All right. Verse 32. And in, in, in the den, there were seven lions and they had given them every day two caucuses, two caucus, caucuses, if I'm saying it right, it's kind of hard for me to say that word, it says in two sheep, which then were not given to them. So they used to have two caucuses and two sheep every day, but they didn't give it to them because they, they wanted the lions to, to attack Daniel. They wanted the lions to kill Daniel. That's how wicked they was. And, you know, idol worshipers. It says, which then were not given to them to the intent they might devour Daniel. Verse 32. Now there was in jury a prophet called Habakkuk who made who had made pottage and had broken bread in a bowl and was going going into the field for to bring it to the reapers. So Habakkuk made food. All right, who's going to bring it out to the reapers, man? Verse 34. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, Go, carry the food that thou hast into Babylon. All right. Into Babylon unto Daniel, who is in the lion's den. So the angel told the Lord, I mean, told Habakkuk to carry this food into Babylon. All right. Who was in to to um to Daniel that was in Babylon, verse 35. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know where the den is. Like, I don't I never went to Babylon. I never saw Babylon, and I don't even know where Daniel is inside Babylon. <laughs> Where's the lion then? <laughs> you know, verse 36 it says, That's how the, this is the power of the Lord. The Lord gonna make sure we eat, man. Verse 36. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown. And bear him by the hair of his head and through the vehemency of his spirit set him in Babylon over the den. So the Lord had an angel carry Habakkuk by the hair and vehemently 
All right, in the spirit, I set him in, the, in Babylon, man, over the lion's den. Verse 35. And Habakkuk cried, saying, O Daniel, take the dinner which Yahweh have sent thee. And Daniel said, Thou hast remembered me, O Yahweh, neither hast thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. So Daniel rose and did eat, and the angel of the Lord set Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. That's the power of the Lord, man. He had Daniel from all the way in jury. All right, go through the spirit, you know, pick them up, drop them off at Babylon to give Daniel food. And then the angel took them back. All right. I'll just read the rest of them. Verse 40, upon the seventh day, the king went to bewail Daniel. And when he came to came to the den, he looked in and behold, Daniel was sitting. Verse 41, then cried the king with a loud voice saying, great art Lord power, which is Yahweh, the power of Daniel. And there is none beside thee. Verse 42, and he drew him out and cast those that were the cause of his destruction into the den and they were devoured in the moment before his eyes man so the lord said scriptures talk about whoever rolled a stone you no know, roughly paraphrasing all right it's gonna fall upon them man try to set trap for someone else you're gonna get trapped up in it man all right so the lord took care of daniel all right and i thought of that when the dude gave him an order and he left the dude started walking up to try to get more money or whatever he was begging for all right and then the dude put out a a water, uh, uh, a Gatorade. I don't know if it was the same car because I, it probably was. It probably was the same person, but it would have been crazy if it was another person. But you know, just to show how the Lord just take care of these regular bum people out here. You know how much more the Lord gonna take care of us. All right, this is the book of um, Matthew six. Bear with me. Matthew six and verse. 25 therefore i say unto you take no thought of your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink for stop nor yet for your body it says what it says what ye put on what ye what what ye shall put on so like you is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment verse 26 behold the fowls of the air that for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more? So like, are ye not much better than they? All right. So the Lord feed the birds. You know they don't reap, they don't gather. All right. The, but the Lord feed them. All right. Every day the little birds be flying. Whoop, the blue jays, fucking uh, cardinals. All right. These different birds. All right. The Lord feed them. He says, "Are ye not much?" better than they that's why i probably name it are you not much better than they verse 36 verse 27 which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature verse 28 and why take ye thought for raiment consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toll not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these verse 30 wherefore if you how so clothe the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Why? Because the Lord's about to destroy this place. Shall he not much more clothe you, O little, O ye a little faith? Verse 31. It says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What we shall eat, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or whether or where where whether shall we be clothed? Verse 32. So we're not supposed to think, take no thought of that, because the Lord, He's gonna provide, man. Verse 32, for all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. 33, but seek ye the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of the most high and his righteousness, but seek ye first the kingdom of the most high and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34, so we still to seek the kingdom, man. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow, for the morrow, shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof man all right so the lord's gonna take care of us man 
All right. You know, that was the main point when I saw that, you know, I knew the Lord, is, you know, he's going to provide for us, man. You know, so Lord, when this lesson was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel, you know, I want to give all praises, all honor and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah Kodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone with Ruvel. And I want to give up peace, greetings, and salutations to all the like Akim that's pushed his word in truth and sincerity. Hey, Shalom, Akim. Keep pushing, keep doing. Shalom.